Hey again guys and welcome back. Uh, if you're looking to learn something, today is not your day. Today we're just having fun. I was playing with these 50 watt resistors for another video and I was wondering, can it actually handle 50 watts? That's, uh, that's a good question. They're about a buck a piece, so uh, maybe a buck 30 Canadian. So I'm plenty fine with destroying them. So that being said, <laughs> let's destroy them. So first and foremost, um, we have to figure out if we're going to get close to the 50 watt mark with this resistor. And I will make an Ohm's Law video. It's actually been requested by Patreons and it has been on my list for a while, but for now I'll just explain to you what I'm doing here. Uh, the Ohm's Law video is not this. So first of all, 50 watts. Uh, watts requires Watt's Law, which is P equals uh, E times I. That's power equals um, electromotive force, so basically voltage times I is current in amps. So Watts equals volts times amps. Um, but this here is, uh, you know, I'm a tradesperson. This here is a bit complex. My wife, the engineer, this is no problem. Um, I use the triangle. And in fact, the way my trade school instructor said it was, draw the fucking triangle. Yeah, that's what you get. Trade schools are pretty awesome. So um, P equals I times R. And the logic behind this just means that um, if you're looking for the P, it's a uh, it's uh, E times R because they're side by side. In math, when they're side by side, they're multiplied. Um, if you're looking for E, that would mean uh, P divided by R because P is on top of R. That's how it works in math. Same thing if you have R or if you're looking for R, it's P divided by E. That's simple. All right, so we know this is a 50 watt unit. And to determine uh, if we get up to 50 watts, we need the E and the I. Whoops, P, E. I, what am I doing? Sorry if that if you paused right after I put this down, then I confused the heck out of you. Okay, so E, E times I. So basically, uh, we need to know the current. Well, we don't have the current. We just have um, uh, the resistance here. And well, I have the voltage because we'll be using a 12 volt car battery. So basically, if we fill in this formula we have sort of uh, like 12 volts here. Uh, what am I doing? Draw the fucking triangle. All right. So we have 12 volts here. And we want to know if we can get up close to the 50 watt mark. Um, so we need to know the I, but we don't, we don't have the current. All we have is the resistance. But we can figure out the resistance because Watt's law is intertwined with Ohm's law. So in Ohm's law, it's E um, I R. So basically, E, which is electromotive force, same thing as this E, equals um, I times R. So uh, that's the current, and same as this one, and R is the resistance. So we have the resistance and the voltage, so we can find the I. Using that I, we can plug it into here see how much wattage we're going to draw. So this is a 3 ohm resistor. So we're going to draw the fucking triangle, so to speak. And we have 12 volts because we know we're using a car battery. So it's 12.6 or whatever. I don't actually know the state of charge of this one. Um, and we have the R, which is 3 ohms. So we just need to do 12 divided by 3 and it'll give us our current, which will be about 4 amps. Then we can go up here and put the I where the I was here. So that's 12 times 4. So 12, 12, uh, 24, 24, 24, 48. So 48 watts. So we can take this thing straight from the battery to here and we're going to dissipate about 48 watts. Sorry, I promised you wouldn't learn something, but maybe some of you did. It's not really up to me, it's up to you. So, um, I want to measure the temperature and I want to measure the current. Do I want to measure the current? Yeah, why not? We'll measure the current. Okay, so temperature 
uh, for that we need a thermocouple. And a thermocouple is this guy here. It's just basically two different metals with a, um, like welded together. It's soldered, but it's high temperature solder, I believe. And so in this case, um, temp goes there and there. And then I can put this in degrees science. I need to attach this to this to find out how much heat we're generating. So I will use some fake Kapton tape. Um, this stuff is not Kapton brand, but I believe it's still polyamide with the material that Kapton tape is made of. Now this will hurt dissipation a little bit. We will be insulating the resistor a little bit, but honestly, it doesn't matter. At least, it doesn't matter for me, because I don't care if this thing blows up. This is all for entertainment. So there we go. So our thermal couple is properly coupled. And we have here, it's about 20 degrees C, which is actually a little bit warmer than the room here. I wonder if this was the one I was playing with earlier. Don't remember. All right, we need some leads. Now these are a little bit thin, but hopefully they don't add too much resistance. So I'll go from the positive. Oh, look at that. My solder broke off. Huh. Don't know if I'll be able to use this. You know what? Let's just use alligator clips. So we'll go from the negative, the com, here to here. Need to find some red leads now. Guess it doesn't really matter. I'll just use this black lead like this. I need one more lead now for sticking into the 12 volt battery. And of course the next one I find is a red lead. Okay, so this will go here to the negative and we will set this to current. So just so you know the accepted level of temperature, the accepted temperature you can reach on a surface before you shouldn't be able to handle it or be forced to handle it. I think it was a US work safety thing I looked up. Uh, is 60 degrees science, 60 degrees C, 140 F. So here we go. As soon as I plug this in, we're going to get hopefully around 4 amps flowing through there and watch the temperature rise. Okay, 3.7, which is pretty good. So we are actually cranking out, you know, near our 48 watts. Our temperature is rising here. Just wonder if the, yeah, the probe is stuck to there. So here it goes, 32. Temperature is rising. I could try this with a one ohm resistor too, but uh, that'll have the implication of being three times more current. I don't know if this is getting hot. You know the wire is actually getting warm. Oh, it's not though. Oh, it's near the clamp. The alligator clip is actually getting a little warm. Still climbing. Starting to smell. Oh yeah, well look at that. That resistor is now hot nearing the 100 degrees C mark. 100 degrees C. And climbing. I'm not sure if this is truly a 50 watt capable resistor. Okay, it's not scorching my uh, build surface yet. Ooh, it's starting to smell though. <laughs> 123 Oh yeah, it smells bad. I'm going to pull it. Okay. <laughs> 130 degrees C. Um, the battery is ice cold. It can do 4 amps all day, every day. But uh, <laughs> this resistor is now carrying... Now, it's going up because the casing is made of aluminum. And it's just gathering all the heat from the inside now. So... Yeah, the alligator clip is okay. It's warm, a little bit warm. Did it get hot over here in the meter? Nope. Warm. 
just a little warm not hot but these guys must be oh yeah I can feel the heat radiating off that that's awesome so um, yeah <laughs> quick video not very instructional but you know at least it was fun so <laughs> these things in open air uh, cannot handle 50 watts thanks for watching